Hello there geographers and welcome back to the Mr. Sin channel. Today we continue our conversation on agricultural revolutions as we move into the Green Revolution. Remember if you find value in any of these topic review videos, consider subscribing. The Green Revolution transformed our ability as humans to produce food. It led to higher yielding plants and animals by utilizing genetically modified organisms or GMOs for short. We also saw increased yields due to advancements made in fertilizers, pesticides, and herbicides which allowed for a boom in food production production around the world. New chemical fertilizers such as nitrogen and phosphite allowed for plants to grow faster compared to previous natural fertilizers. New pesticides stopped insects from destroying the crops, which increased farmers' yields. And herbicides targeted invasive plants to prevent weeds from growing in the field, allowing more water and nutrients to go to the crops. The Green Revolution also brought new hybrid plants with shorter growing seasons, which allowed farmers to plant twice a year instead of one, and were generally made up of a variety variety of superior characteristics compared to the original plant that allowed them to have a higher yield. Dr. Norman Borlaug is often credited as the father of the Green Revolution. Borlaug conducted research in Mexico where he sought to develop a new strain of wheat that could be more resistant to the growing challenges in Mexico and would result in a higher yield for farmers. He ended up developing a new semi-dwarf high yield disease resistant wheat variety. His work not only ended up transforming Mexico's agricultural production and food supply, but other countries around the world, such as Pakistan and India. Borlaug not only started the Green Revolution, but ended up winning the Nobel Peace Prize and is credited for saving over a billion lives from starvation. Now, one of the things I mentioned earlier was genetically modified organisms, or GMOs for short. A GMO is an organism whose genome has been altered, transformed, and engineered to specific physiological traits to promote the generation of certain biological products. When looking at GMO crops, we can see plant varieties that have traits that hybrid plants could never achieve. For example, we now have certain crops that are resistant to specific herbicides and pesticides. This allows farmers to apply different herbicides and pesticides to their fields, killing undesirable insects and plants, but not harming the crops they are trying to grow. In the United States today, over 90% of corn, upland cotton, and soybeans have been genetically altered in some way. The Green Revolution also led to more factory farms, as farms became more mechanized and used more more machines than human labor. All of which was supported due to advancements in transportation and increased globalization, which made it easier for farms to sell products around the world. This new efficiency in the production of food allowed for a greater food surplus to occur, which ultimately reduced the price of food. But unfortunately, we also started to see a decline of family farms as industrial farming started to gain momentum. Factory farms have been criticized for destroying the local environment, increasing soil depletion and erosion, and have also been scrutinized for how they treat animals, which has led to animal rights concerns. So we can see that on one hand, the Green Revolution did a lot of good. It increased yields for farmers, it increased the world's food supply, which decreased global hunger, and helped create cheaper food that can be consistently produced. But on the other hand, it also had negative impacts on the environment due to the increased use of chemical fertilizers, pesticides, and herbicides, which not only impacted the soil it was being applied to, but local water sources as well due to water runoff. It also also led to a decrease in family farms due to the amount of money that is now required to start and operate a farm, leading to discrepancies and inequalities between different regions and people around the world. Lastly, it also promoted the production of fewer species of crops, which reduces the biodiversity in an ecosystem and has led to multiple concerns about animal rights due to how livestock are now being raised. All right, that was a quick look at the Green Revolution. Now comes the time to practice what we've learned. Remember, if you found value in this video, consider subscribing. And if you need more help with your AP Human Geography studies, check out my ultimate review packet or the Discord server in the description of the video. Both are great resources that can help you get an A in your class and a 5 on the national exam. As always, I'm Mr. Sin. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time online.